Hey, welcome back to the Prospered Soul podcast. This is Lana McMurray, owner and founder of Free to Thrive Coaching. And this is day two of my life following my documentary, documenting my life as I am unfolding the best version of myself continually. And so continue on today talking more about um, we're getting into consciousness and um, understanding how, you know, we want things to be different or you know how you're really, really wanting things to be different. And with all the information that's out there on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, in books, on podcasts, whatever, we learn about how to change our circumstances, our situations, events, people. Really, the only person you can change is yourself um, in different things. And we learn that thoughts become things, right? So in a sense, we're wanting to change our reality. We want to manifest changes. However, Looking at it that way is coming at it at the wrong way. Uh, That attitude, that thinking, that concept of fixing something or changing something actually isn't accurate. What is accurate is understanding reality and what it is. What you can pick up with your five senses and what you know habitually today is called a 3D. And it's simply a projection of what's going on inside of you. Now, I, for one, find that very comforting very reassuring because it tells me that I have control. And it also takes away a lot of pain because if you're having repeating circumstances occur in your life, like being involved with someone and they really aren't available, that is something for you to look within yourself and see what stories am I telling inside of me? What in my consciousness, and I'll talk more and really go into consciousness over this next couple of days, but what is it within me that is making that happen? Because if you can identify what that is and it's and it's absolutely possible to identify it and quickly and revise it that's the change that you do is the change from within because you acknowledge that that's me okay I can't be rejected. You can't be rejected. We can only reject ourselves because when it comes down to it, there is nobody else in your reality but you. You are the one that is causing the projections or the experiences to happen. And that might sound really cruel, depending on what's going on in your life, everything is not your fault. There are things that you have to say no to and stop and quit, okay? You don't have to tolerate anything. But I'm talking about those repeated things that continue to happen that you've been working on, that you want to change, that just seem to keep showing up. There's a reason for that. And it is within your ability to make changes about it. You go and, you know, stepping ahead, 
a couple of days um, as we really unfold this, unpack this and get more into it. But you don't really fix anything. You transcend it. You pick another timeline. You pick another reality. The experience you have right now is just one of quantum numbers of possibilities. You don't need to spend your energy trying to re- to fix something. You can use revision. You can just choose differently. You can claim I am that. You can be what you want to be just by claiming it and holding that position in every single thing, every person, everything will get in line with you or get out your way. Absolutely. But that takes standing in faith and following your desire because your desires are your safe guidance. They are a clue. They are actually the proof of what you can have. And no one desires something wicked. That's a different feeling. That's not a true desire. True desires that come from your, from God, from your higher self, are ordained and meant to be here and already exist. And your purpose in life is to unfold that and the fun of making it happen. It's a game. So reality is a reflection of your consciousness Reality does not hold any power because it's just a reflection. So really getting bent out of shape and upset about what's happening in your life right now is just a waste of time. Instead, put your attention on changing your consciousness, changing what you're thinking about it. Um the interpretation and the meanings you're giving to it. And is it really even freaking, is it even really true? You know, our natural state of being is who we really are, is a small God. The Bible says so itself. And I remember when I used to be really into Kenneth Copeland. I had like so many of his CD sets. Back then, there no, they weren't even CDs. I, I had started getting CDs. They were cassettes. I had cassettes. Uh, yeah, I did have CDs. I had so many things on faith and love, the faith walk and the love walk, him and Kenneth Hagen, Jerry um, Seville, Carlton um, not Carl- well, I like to call them Pearson, but you know, that whole group, I used to run in that circle. So I used to be in the word of faith. Now I'm just into God, who God says he is and the truth. So, but he got a lot of flack because, you know, um, he would say that we are a little lower than God, not the angels and that people are intimidated. And so they um, transcribe that part of the Bible of Psalms 8, 4 through 5 to say, you have made him a little lower than the angels. But really, the true interpretation is that you have made him a little lower than God. So it says, what is hum- a human that you are mindful of him, a son of man that you care for him? And I got a hit when I was writing this down to share this today, when it talked about mindful of him, once you really understand consciousness and the power of attention, God being mindful of us is huge because it's what you put your mind on that exists. And the fact that, and even this question is being asked about God, what is a human that you are mindful of him? Do you see how important, how valuable you are that the God of all creation put is mindful of you. He's made you, you are a little lower than himself. And in fact, it talks about in John 10 30, that you and the father are one and the father means consciousness. God is consciousness. 
And that is simply, in the layman's term, is awareness of being. Like you can be having a toothache, right? You can be having a heartache. You could be having uh, money problems and frustrations. And But when you stop and you just detach from those things, things and you just come into the present moment and you just breathe, you realize that you have thoughts about those things, but you are not the thoughts. They're thoughts that you have. That sensation that is having the thought and seeing the thought about it is awareness. That's consciousness. And again, that's your attention. When you have a thought on something, you have attention, you make it real. And whatever you put you in it, and it sends energy that way, automatically, you can't stop it. So that's why you are to think on things that are lovely and true and pure and so forth and so forth. And to not put your attention on lack and limitations because you shine your light of awareness on it and you make it grow and you make it stay. You make it appear. Actually, Bashar talks about how the world is, we're here in every second, every second, every second. We are actually different. And it only feels like a continuation because we're continually bringing ourselves back to the thinking on something. So you're very, very very powerful. So what I want you to understand is that you are made a little lower in God. Now, you and God, the Father, are one. You and your consciousness are one. Consciousness is who you are, who you am, but the Father is greater. The Father will always be greater, but you have a greatness in you and you have it for this earth because you appeared here so that you, because you came from wholeness it's like if you take go out and you went to the beach and you walked out into the water with a cup when you dipped your cup inside of that ocean and you lifted it up you took ocean water into a cup it's still ocean water though it is part of a whole and you are part of a whole. You already have all the things you desire. You're giving the ability to, but you know, when you have it all, you don't realize that you don't, that you don't, you know, you, you just have it. So to give you that sensation of knowing and the benefit, you know, the pleasure of ha- feeling like having it and attaining it you come here, you came here, all of us did, um, were our create creations. We came here to feel and experience what we want to have and go get it. You know, it is a game. And you are meant to want things because those are things you already have. And you came here to feel what it feels like to have it. It's kind of like being grateful for it. You know, you don't know what you have until you don't have it. Um, It's probably, you know, not technical, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, So you're actually so whole that it's impossible for you to want, except that here on earth, you came here to experience the absence of it so that but you're remembering, oh, wait, you know, that desire, that urge, that des- that wanting is, is remembering, oh, I have that already. You know, what you need to be telling yourself is I already have that. And because I desire it, that is proof that I already have it. And you really just have to just stand on it and say, that's mine, you know, and then you just see yourself with it and you let it go. And in your life, you'll have inspired actions that will naturally line up to lead you to those things. You don't have to do all of these practices and three, six, nines and, you know, five, five, fifty or um, you don't have to do scripting. You don't have to do any of that. If it helps you to believe and to back yourself, do it. But you really don't have to do anything but just stand on the word, you know, it's mine. So 
what you desire. Um, let's see here. So we're doing it all for the fun. So keep in mind that reality, it's, it's a mirror. It reflects what you think most about. It reflects what you believe the most, what your dominant thoughts are, what the assumptions are that you are holding in your consciousness. You are the source of everything your inner world is. And by your connection to God, who is your father, which you could call what I'm not saying it's, it's has to be Christianity because I no longer believe everything is Christianity. I believe God is beyond one faith, but I'm talking about all that all is. Um, consciousness is who you are. So really, I just want you to dwell in that thought about consciousness and get prepared to hear more about it and how to work it. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be so liberating and make your life so much easier. If you are interested in booking a um, coaching session with me, I do have packages available and I do do one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, you will see everything in the description and also for my Power of Clarity part program for entrepreneurial women or not even, you don't even have to be entrepreneurial. It's just I'm entrepreneurial, but you don't have to be. If you have had um, toxic relationships that have really warped your mind or taken away your autonomy and that, um, that ability to really trust yourself and be yourself. This is ideally for you. It's already pre-recorded with um, several sessions uh, for the first phase. And then we're going live teaching these and working through our energy and our, our spirits and getting everything aligned and just becoming who you are. Because remember, it's your reality. You get to choose. And you get to see how you brought this into your life and you can undo it. You really, really, really can. All right. Thanks for listening. And we'll talk to you or we'll pick this back up again. Bye.